Welcome back to episode 12 and we're going to look today at ribbon microphones. Those microphones that are well known for being described as warm, lovely sounding and then incredibly dangerous to own because that you're going to destroy them in an instant. Now there is some physics behind this destroy story that goes on. Um, the killer for destroying a ribbon is blowing into it. Idiots who go up to a microphone and go, testing, testing. Well, if it's a ribbon microphone and you blow into it like that, you're going to blow all the little zigzag corrugations out of the ribbon. It's wrecked. It's gone. It's finished. You need a new ribbon. Um, and not that many people now have the ability to put ribbons back in. Uh, the little machines are getting quite rare that actually form the ribbons. But, you know, there are specialists who can still fix them for you. Uh, they're never quite the same. Uh, if you swap the ribbon on one of those microphones, even for one that's identical, it sounds a little bit different. Uh, it's to do with the actual physical size and it's to do with the tension that's in the ribbon formed in those zigzag elements. So uh, swapping a ribbon when you've got two of them means that the two microphones are never going to sound the same again. That is sadly a, a fact of life. Now, the other thing with ribbons, of course, is that their polar diagrams uh, are different from all the other mics we use. We're very comfy with using cardioid microphones. All our uh, dynamic microphones, all of our condensers, start off in the cardioid pattern. If we buy one, almost certainly it will be a cardioid. Uh, a few people might buy omnidirectional microphones, and a few people have got multi-pattern microphones like these where you can set cardioid, hyper, hypercardioid, omnidirectional, figure of eight, or in this particular one, variations in between them. But essentially, most people are stuck with cardioid. Now, just as a quick recap, if you look at a typical microphone that's set in figure of eight pattern, it picks up that way, and it picks up that way, running down the side, that is where the nulls are. So with that microphone there, it's facing that way and it's facing that way. This direction is the null. The same sort of null that you get at the back of a cardioid microphone. So it's really good for picking things out in two directions. Um, now that can be quite handy because if we have two people and one of these in between us, this side of the microphone is going to pick me up. If there was a person sitting on that side, it will pick them up. That's quite handy. Um, equally, people sitting either side, maybe uh, shuffling papers or maybe they're the technical bods doing their, their bits and pieces, they're actually in a safe zone. So what they do either side of there can't be heard. Forward, backwards, one microphone will cover two people. It's a really neat idea. The BBC uh, used to use that trick uh, in many of their radio studios for years. One microphone and you actually put the interviewer and the interviewee either side of it. If one of them had a slightly louder voice, you just move that person a bit further away. It works really well. Before we go too far, let's just give you a listen to how rotating the microphone changes the capture. So we'll switch across to this 414 now. So here we are, we're on the 414, and I'm gonna slowly turn it round. Now, I'm now talking into the side null. So this is the side of the 414. I'm going to rotate it round a bit further. And now I'm talking into the back of the 414. So that's the sort of sound that we get. It goes from that one, goes right the way round as I turn it like that, and goes right the way round until I'm back again on the other side. And the front and the back are exactly the same. That's what it looks like when you view it from the top. Figure of eight. There, there, nothing there, and nothing there. There is some truth to the story that you could destroy a ribbon microphone with DC. If you apply DC directly across the ribbon, you destroy it. But I've never come across a ribbon that does not have a transformer as part of the design. The thing with a ribbon is that the little bit of foil that's in between the magnet is an absolute short circuit. So the impedance of a ribbon microphone is very, very low. So all ribbon microphones need to have uh, a transformer to bring that 
low, low impedance up to something that we can do something with, with especially with modern equipment. We're looking for, what, 250, 600 ohms sort of range for impedances, and then it'll match nicely to the kit we've got. While there is a possibility that you can damage a ribbon if you apply DC across it, the DC shouldn't be able to get there. And if it does, generally there's something else gone wrong, so there's another fault condition. So what I thought I would do today is, I've only got one ribbon, um, I don't use them very much at all. Um, I occasionally get it out if I'm doing something with a singer. Um, I do quite a lot of sort of classical type recordings. And sometimes um, sopranos can have a little bit of a harsh voice uh, when recorded on condensers, uh, certainly the smaller diaphragm condensers. And having something as an alternative is quite useful. And a ribbon inside a church at maybe three or four feet from the singer can actually sound quite nice. There is, of course, a little bit of pickup from the rear but generally in churches and buildings like that, the acoustics are quite nice anyway. So you can actually get a nice balance of the singer and the space with a ribbon. So I've, I've got one and it's not a particularly expensive one. It's, it, it's, I wish I could get another one, to be honest, um, because it's a really nice microphone. I bought it about uh, 10 years ago. Um, they were available under two or three different brands um, made in China and I bought it on a bit of a whim and I rather like it. So what I thought I would do is, as I saw it sitting on the shelf this morning, I'm going to get it out of its box and I'm going to plug it in in place of this AKG 414 and I'm not going to turn the phantom power off. So we'll see what happens. Um, so uh, it might go wrong, but I don't think it will. We'll give it a go. So first things first. We'll, we'll um, switch back to the SM7B, the reference mic we're using. So we're now back on the SM7B and I'm going to disconnect the cable. It comes in quite a nice little posh wooden box. So Here's the microphone that I might be destroying. Um, it's, it's quite simple, no controls, transformer in the body of the unit, um, fires that way, fires that way, and we've got the figure of eight pattern like that. So here comes the cable. There we go. And you're now listening to me on this ribbon. And I'll just rotate it just so you can see that the pattern behaves the same as the 414 on figure of eight did. So that's me talking there. That's me now talking on the side of the microphone. And if I bring it round, I'm now going round and I'm now talking on the rear of the microphone. So everything is working perfectly well. Now, that's me plugging 48 volt phantom power into this ribbon with no ill effects whatsoever. Now. I am not saying that you should do the same. I want to make it very, very clear that everything you read on the internet tells you that when you do that, the microphone will die. Now, clearly, it hasn't died. Now, that could just be good luck. Uh, it could just be the design of this microphone. It could be the transformer they're using in here has got DC blocking. Um, most of them have. I mean, the, the, an, in, an integral part of most transformers is that there isn't a DC path at all between the primary and secondary. With this particular microphone, I have no idea what the transformer inside it uh, is design-wise. It just seemed to me that it was very unlikely I was going to destroy it, because let's be honest, nowadays you buy a product, doesn't matter what it is, uh, it's got to be able to work with people who do things wrong which means that at some stage a ribbon microphone is going to be connected accidentally to 48 volts. My point is, if you accidentally do it, please don't automatically think you have just killed the microphone, because almost certainly you won't have. We should say that you know, common sense says that if you don't need 48 volts and you've got a ribbon, which is a delicate microphone, then you really ought to turn it off. You should do. Please do. 
But if you forget, you know, there's no need to go onto an internet forum and say, I've just plugged in 48 volts to my ribbon microphone. Have I destroyed it? Uh, well, the answer is probably not. Uh, but of course, the simple thing is just plug it in and see what happens. But realistically, this one's just been connected. Um, it suffered no ill effects whatsoever. And I really think we should play down this idea that you can destroy ribbons this easily. Now, clearly, if you've got a ribbon microphone that's a vintage device and it's worth three or four thousand, then plugging it in with 48 volt phantom power is probably something you don't want to do. But equally, you wouldn't try and hang it from a piece of thin elastic from the roof, would you, in case that dropped? Common sense says you've got to be a little bit sensible with these things. But if you do make a little mistake and you plug up your ribbon microphone with 48 volts like I just did, nothing is going to happen. If it does, you were really, really unlucky. But it doesn't worry me. The point of this video is just to give you a little bit of peace of mind. If you do accidentally connect 48 volts phantom power to your ribbon microphone, you are not automatically going to destroy it. Almost certainly it's going to be absolutely fine. So when people tell you that if you've done it, you may as well throw the microphone away. Whatever you do, plug it in and check it first, because almost certainly nothing horrible will have happened whatsoever. Uh, there is some physics, we've explained that, but realistically, microphones are pretty tough beasts, even ribbons. OK, thanks for watching. Click the subscribe button if you liked it, and I'll see you on another video. Take care. Bye.